What's up guys, Flippin' Steve back with another video. Not with my normal backdrop, not in my normal location, but in the car. Um, I'm sitting here waiting, so I'm using my time wisely and, and put out a video for you guys. As you guys know, I'm fresh back from the Raleigh show, North Carolina, which was um, this past weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And I took a little bit of a different approach in some of my negotiating and some of my shopping uh, tactics, browsing tactics um, at this past show as kind of just a test. And I want to put out this video um, to help people, uh, caution people, but I, I don't want to use the word caution in a negative way, but just help people protect themselves when they're either buying or selling or doing whatever you may be doing at a card show. I'm going to um, use three separate occasions that I experienced in person from this past show that I was at. Um, I'm going to tell a couple stories about some cards, some deals, just some situations. And I put this uh, stuff out there for you guys um, so you know you can be aware uh, for when you attend the show. And I know a lot of this stuff is common sense and it's common knowledge that a lot of experienced people out there know about. But if you're new to the hobby and you haven't experienced shows that much, um, then take some of this, um, you know, self-hand experience that I've, that I've had, you know, and apply it uh, for yourself and maybe it'll help you out. And, uh, you know, this video isn't to be negative and point out, um, or, or, and say things in the hobby are bad or anything like that, because, um, they're not, and, and most of the occasions that I'm going to point out are few and far between, you know, uh, maybe one in 10 or even, even less, maybe one in 20, something like this might happen. But remember, this is a hobby. This is something we all love to do, whether it's for fun, whether we do it for income, whether we're flippers, investors, collectors, short-term, long-term, whatever it is, you know, it's still supposed to, it's still supposed to be fun. And um, so, you know, most of the people out there are good, but because the hobby is based around money uh, for the majority, and rather you are one of the people that I named just a minute ago, a flipper, an investor, a collector, short-term, long-term, there is money involved, whether you're buying for your collection or you're buying for a future sale, or rather you're a dealer and you're selling, there is always going to be transactions and cash changing hands, you know, in one extreme, you know, one way or the other. So when money is involved every once in a while, you know, things could be shady and you want to protect yourself against that. And first thing I want to talk about is when you're buying raw cards from a show, um, don't be afraid to ask, to ask, to look at the card. Don't be afraid to look it over. Well, and, uh, I've had instances in the past where I've gone up, gone to a show and I've gone up to a seller and I've been like, Hey, do you mind if I take a look at this card? For instance, about a year ago at a Philly show, I said, Hey, can I take a look at that Trey Young Select? I'd like to take a look at that. And the um, the seller basically said, the card is this price, either you want it or you don't. And that's fine and that's fair. It's, it's his card. It's his prices. I wasn't there to dispute that, but he didn't even want to let me look at the card. So, I mean, not even out of the showcase. And I've never experienced that again. And it has, it has been a long time since that happened. But in a day and age of graded cards, and also lots of people selling and you having, you know, multiple people you can buy from. That's the kind of dealer you kind of want to steal yourself clear from. Uh, I took the approach at this show to going up to a lot of dealers. And if they were selling graded cards, I would straight up ask them, okay, so um, I trust, and I would introduce and I would say, hey, I trust you. Is there any, uh, is there any reason why that card isn't graded? Is there any reason why that card in your um, showcase is raw and not graded, especially when they're selling a majority of graded cards? And a lot of the times the answers I would get would be, I haven't had time to grade it. It's not gradable. Lots of people were honest with me. Uh, for example, I went up to a, a showcase. I asked about this Colin Sexton Immaculate RPA. Um, I said, uh, by the way, is there any reason that that card isn't isn't graded and most of the cards around it are graded? And the um, the dealer actually said, I've looked over it. The autograph looks really good. It does have a little chipping on the back edge. I believe it'll probably grade a nine. And I honestly, I just got that card and I haven't had time to send it in. And that was a completely honest answer. I looked over the card, everything they, you know, and they told me that before I asked to look at the card. I just said, hey, you save me some time and, you know, spare me the bull crap and 
Um, you know, is there any reason why that hasn't been graded? And then I did take it upon myself to look over the card, but that was kind of a test question, you know, to see what this dealer would tell me. Maybe they would say, hey, no, that card is an, you know, it's an immaculate card in immaculate condition. And then I, maybe I would look at it and it would, uh, maybe, maybe it wouldn't be. But um, again, that was an honest dealer. I bought the card uh, on the criteria that I knew what it looked like, as well as their assessment of the card. However, there was um, one dealer that I did go up to that said all the exact same stuff. Um, the card looks good. I just haven't had time to submit it. I don't grade that much. Most of the slabs that I do have, I already bought graded. And all that stuff may be true, but when I looked at the card, it was really beat up on the back. The back of the card was very beat up. If I just looked at that card on the face of it, on the front from the showcase, the card would have looked really good. But by looking at it over on the back, I realized the card was pretty damaged. And it was a card that I passed on. Now, do I chastise the seller for that? No, I don't, because maybe they were being honest. Maybe they didn't know the condition. People have lots of inventory coming in and going out all the time. So am I saying the dealer was lying and trying to sell me a good card or a bad card? I mean, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say no, but as a buyer, as a consumer, someone who's going to spend their hard-earned money on a card, make sure you just protect yourself against that because there probably are some people out there who would like to pass off a damaged card as if it wasn't damaged to someone you know, who didn't want to take the time to look at it or ask to look at it. Um, so I'm going to say, if someone's not going to let you look at a card, just completely pass and make sure if you do got the opportunity to look at a card. I mean, that's why we go to shows to buy these raw cards, because you can actually look at them and assess them yourself as a buy, as opposed to buying online and looking at a scan. And you never know what you're looking at when you're looking at a scan. It could be, it could be anything. It could be a different card. You know, it could be a, a stock photo. It could be whatever. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, if you're going to a show and you know what you're targeting, know the basic uh, price point of what the items are going for. Uh, basically, the comps of what the items are going for that you're looking to buy. Now, I know it's impossible to know the comps of everything, especially when you're looking through a show and a card just pops up that catches your attention. And it might be a card that you know might not be targeting. And you're like, oh, man, I really like that card. And, you, you know, you may have to look, go and look up comps on your own, but kind of know the value of the things that you are going there to pinpoint. Um, and again, this is common sense. Most people do this, but I'm going to talk about a situation at the show that happened with me where um, there's a specific card that I had already been buying. I had already purchased two, and I'll show you in a minute. I actually brought the cards in the car with me. Um, I approached a, a, a showcase and there was um, a Michael Porter Jr. Blue Velocity Rated Rookie PSA 10, which I've already purchased two of these. When I was buying these, they were $175. Bucks. I know that the value on these right now is right around the $300 mark. I knew this going into the show. I had purchased two for $175. The card has gone up. eBay auctions have been ending at around $300. One actually ended that day at $308. But I knew the price of the card. There was one in a showcase, it was unstickered, unmarked, and I asked the seller, I said, um, how much for the Michael Porter Jr. Blue Velocity? And they said $675. That is what they they quoted me on the price. They said $675. And I just simply said, thank you, thanks. Um, you know, thanks for letting me know what the price is going for. And I continued to look through the showcase to see if there was anything else that might catch my eye. Now, I already knew that we were too far off for me to make a deal because he also said it's 675, but I have room on it, which means that he's willing to negotiate. But I already know that I don't want to pay over 300 bucks and he's starting at 675. Now, could I have been ignorant and been like, that card's only comping for 300? You could, but that's not very good etiquette in my opinion. Basically, I believe people can sell their cards for whatever they want to sell them for, for whatever reason. They're in for them for a different amount. At least they can give you the price that they want to give you. Um, sometimes that might be trying to take advantage of people, and that's why I'm talking about this right now in this video. But that's also why I'm saying know the price of the stuff that you're looking for. Um, I immediately knew that this there was not going to be a deal for this card. I'm, I'm looking through other stuff. And I never bring up the word comps in a deal to a seller. Um, I just don't. Um, however, 
This gentleman then said to me, the last comp on this card was 675, is what he told me. I never mentioned comps. When he said the price was 675, I never said they're comping on eBay at 300. You know, it's not my place to do that. It's his card. He's the seller. Again, he can sell it for what he wants to sell it for um, or tell me what he wants to sell it for. He, however, he in turn then said the last comp was 675, which I knew was not correct. Um, I have two of these. And all I said was, oh, that's good to know because I have two. I hope it is going for 675. You know, that makes me feel good on my $175 investment. If it's going for $675, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, he then corrected himself and said, they're listed at Buy It Now's for $675 or best offer. So he went from the car to $675, the last comp is $675. Oh, well, it, it, there wasn't actually a sale at $675. It, it, there, there's Buy It Now's listed at $675 or best offer. So again, know what you're looking for because that day in auction of that exact same card, again, the Michael Porter Jr. Optic Blue Velocity and a PSA 10 ended at 308 at auction. I watched it. I'm out on that card at 300. I wouldn't tell anybody to buy that card, um, you know, over 300 to 325 right now. I was in so early at 175 that now I'm, I'm just happy taking what I can get at $300. I was in that auction that ended at 308. And 300 was my max bid and I was out. So I'm not telling people to go pay more money for that card or anything like that. I'm actually out on that card over 300 bucks, but it is going slightly over 300 bucks now. But just be aware, don't just take um, a seller's word for it. Oh, it's going for 675. How about I offer, I'll give you 500. You know, he's going to take that deal because actually comps are 300. Okay. Not a buy it now or best offer that hasn't sold. So again, just be aware of the price points um, as well on the items that you're looking at. Now, three, on the flip side of that, be aware of the items that you're looking to move and their values, okay? Um, no, hey, I'm, I'm taking this card or this card to the show and I'm either gonna try to sell it, I'm gonna try to trade it, I wanna move it into something else, I wanna trade up, I wanna trade down, whatever the, uh, the case may be that you wanna do. But know the value of the item that you want to move. And again, I know this sounds redundant and I know that it's common sense, but still, I just want to drive home. Know the value of the card, at least in ballpark that you want to move. And, uh, you know, know what you're willing to settle at. Don't let yourself get lowballed. Be comfortable with what you want to take. And the story that I want to, um, the story that I want to go ahead and tell here is, I have a Zion Williamson Select Red BGS 10, all right? Now, this card is numbered out of 199, and it's a BGS 10. So you're not going to find many comps on this card because you just don't see the BGSs out there floating around that much, not in a 10. You see the 9.5s. Multiple people at the show were interested in this card. People are interested in Zion, the rarity, the serial number, the color, the, um, the grade, a lot of people, that, that card that I took to the show, got it got a lot of attention. Let's just say that. However, um, I did have someone ask me, you know, and I know uh, around August 29th that the last comp on a PSA 10 of that, a PSA 10, which is a different card, it's a different grade, remember, went for $2,300. So I know on August 29th, going into this, I know that on August 29th, the exact same card in a PSA 10 sold for 2300 bucks. So now I'm thinking to myself, a BGS 10 has got to have at least a 2X. When you look at a Prism base, Zion, PSA 10 going for 400 and a BGS 10 going for about 1600 right now, you're looking at a 4X multiplier on those two cards. So I'm at least going to say mine is at least worth two times the value of the PSA 10. And that's just me. And my assessment might be wrong. Some people might think that's high and that is fair. That's fair. Um, but I think that if a PSA 10 is going for 2300 then a BGS 10 should probably go for around 4K on a minimum. I just think that that's fair. And I may never get that for the card, and that's fine. Um, but again, getting a little off topic. However, I did have someone ask me um, what I wanted for the card. And my response was, I'm not really sure because it's hard to find a comp. Now, yes, there was a comp on August 29th for a red PSA 10, but it's hard to find a comp on a BGS 10. And that's what I was implying. 
I was implying that it's hard to find a comp because it's a BGS 10. The response that I got from the person who wanted to buy the card off me was a blue just did 1500 quote unquote, a blue just did 1500. So basically what they were saying was that a blue of that card, the blue parallel, which is numbered out of 299 just did 1500. So I researched that a little bit. I looked on August 14th or 15th, August 14th or 15th, a blue PSA 10 did 1500. However, the quote that I got was a blue just did 1500. So you figure I'm at the show on September 18th, around 17th, 18th, something like that. That's a month ago. So when someone says a blue just did 1500, I think of your definition in time there. Cause when I think of just did 1500, I think of a day ago, maybe two days ago, a week ago, but not a month ago. Okay. The market changes too much in that period of time to say a blue just did 1500. Also a blue is a different card. It's numbered out of 299. It's not numbered out of 199. And it was a PSA 10, not a BGS 10. So not the same card company grade, not the same grade, not the exact same card. And the comp was a month old. I knew that there was a red that went for 2300 in a PSA 10 more previous than the blue that went for 1500. However, the person making me the offer did not mention that comp. They skipped right over that comp that was more recent, that was the exact same card. The only thing that was different was the grading company. And instead of saying, oh, well, red PSA 10 went on August 29th, a couple weeks ago for 2300, they went back to a sale that was a month old and said, a blue just did 1500. So again, to me, that's kind of a, if you're new, to me, that's kind of a dealer trying to take advantage or see if you're going to trust their information. Um, now, could that have been the last time they looked that card up and maybe that's the last comp that they know about it? Sure, but I'm going to say in this case, how often are you looking these cards up? Um, what's going to drive somebody to look up a select blue just out of the blue and remember that it was 1500? Um, why would they say, just did when it's a month old. I mean, there's just a lot of shadiness around that information coming from someone who wants to buy the card. Now, I know they want to get the card at a deal. I know that they don't, they want to pay as little as they can, but to just go off and, and give someone a quote like that, to me, it's kind of trying to take advantage of someone who may not have known what they were doing. Myself, I knew what I was doing with my card. I knew what the most recent comp on a red was. I knew when the comp was. However, when I went into the negotiation, I said it's hard to get a comp because this is a BGS 10. I didn't say on August 29th, the PSA 10 red did 2300. I wanted to see how the dealer was going to approach it. And unfortunately, they approached it from a shady side with some old dated information on a card that wasn't even the same card. So maybe shady, maybe not. But again, just be wary of that. Know the value of your card. Don't be lowballed. Don't just take someone else's... Um, word for it. And again, a majority of the people out there in the hobby are, are, are good. I had way more good transactions than I had bad. I bought cards for good values. People give me good prices. People give me good quotes. Uh, we told, we, we, we talked, we, we had conversation. The show was great. All right. And it wasn't a very big show, but it was a very good show. I had a good time. I got some good deals. I didn't sell anything. I wasn't looking to sell a lot, but just a couple takeaways that I want to say is that there are people out there that will try to take advantage of you, especially if you're new and you don't do your research and your due diligence and know the value of your cards, know the value of what you want to buy and know, you know, the condition of the cards that you want to buy. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. Again, I just want this to be helpful. I want it to be positive. It's not a bashing on don't go to shows. Everybody's shady. It's just a, Hey, red flags. Just be careful uh, when you're doing your um, transactions and make sure in the end that you are looking out for yourself because that's the one person that you can always 100% trust is yourself. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. Hopefully you take something away from this video. Again, it's shot in the car. The lighting's not very good, but I wanted to get it done. I wanted to get it out, use my time wisely. And um, hopefully I catch you guys out at a show. 
Hopefully you guys are finding some good stuff that you like and some good deals out there. And until next time, guys, uh, good luck in your investing. Don't forget to like, sub on your way out. That's fine. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later.